let's get back to the album uh, you made. Uh, yeah, you said you came in the studio, 23 synthesizers, a lot of basses and other people as well. Yeah. Um, what was the, the moment, maybe the most defining moment for you to, to say to yourself, well, I'm out of this difficult period writing-wise and, and now I, I feel the power to it, make an whole album? The, the, first, the first thing, because actually I wrote the, the chorus to a song called Underwater first and then the same night I wrote the whole song for Origin of Love. And, um, and when I got to a section in Origin of Love, I wrote it so fast and I put, I got Nick Littlemore to record a groove and then I put him in the control room and I was like, just, just listen to this, let me write. And I wrote it as I was listening to the groove that was on the loop. And um, I got to a section that went, um, like stupid Adam and Eve, they found their love in a tree and God didn't think they deserved it. So he taught them hate, taught them pride, gave them a leaf, made them hide. Let's push that story aside for the origin is you. You are the origin of love. I was like, and at that moment I stopped and I just started laughing because I was like, okay, that's kind of cool. Um, I'd be proud to write that. And it was the first thing that I'd written in two years that I was like, yeah, I'm proud to write that. I wrote that fucking thing. And it, that, you know, sure, other people may not like it, but for me at that moment, it was, it was like, there we go. I, I'm, I'm writing and I don't know how it's happening. And that's the secret. Because most of the time, you write and you're trying to make something happen. But when it's really good, you don't know how the fuck it's happening. So you just have accepted that now at some point when it, it's maybe more difficult that you just have to wait and see. You just have yourself. to wait and see and you, it just comes out like vomit. <laughs> it just comes out like vomit and you feel like you're stealing because you're not really working hard for it. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not working. You're just kind of, it's just happening. Okay, yeah. Then, of course, you worked with Nick Littlemore, but you had some more uh, artists also collaborating. What was the, maybe after that session you, you had in Montreal, or, or well, yeah, what was the next step for you? Do you thought, well, I have need this and sure. this and this? Need, after, need... after that session, that first session that I had in, in Montreal, I decided to go back to Miami, where I had made a lot of the first album with um, Jody Marr and some of my friends there, who Jody Marr actually, she found me in New York. She mortgaged her apartment in Miami to pay for the demos of my first album. That's what she did. That's how far she went. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to go back to my team in Miami. Miami of all places. But at, you know, now you look at Miami, you're like, oh God, it's just like, you know, uh, you know, convertibles and trash. And, but it's not. It's not at all. In the 70s, you know, in the 80s, like the best records in pop music and history were made there. Everything from Prince records to the Fleetwood Mac records to all the Bee Gees records. So it's got a long history of incredible pop music, and you can understand why. When you're in Miami, you feel like you're in a bubble, and anything, you know, you just write, I don't know why, you just write this kind of slightly sunny American pop music. So I went back to Miami, and I started writing with them a lot, and with Jody, I started writing with her. And then after that, I went back to Montreal. Everything I did, I often took back to Nick Littlemore. Mm -hmm. He was the executive producer so with me, so I was taking it back to him. Then I went to, Stockholm, and I worked with a guy called Klaus Island from the Teddy Bears. Mm -hmm. um, it's one thing led to another. People started contacting me. You know, I, I had to, the one thing I did was I completely destroyed my ego. I walked into the studio every time thinking, I don't have a track record. I've ne I am only going to derive value and find value in myself with what I'm doing right now. Is this a lesson you will take on for the rest of your life as we can maybe as you can maybe say now by making this third album I've made a decision and I discovered some things and I've learned things through the process of the past few records what's the most important one for you destroy your track record you are only as good as the record you are working on right now um, it removes all sense of complacency it also takes off a lot of pressure but it also allows you to write something good and it allows you to make yourself feel uncomfortable you know knocking on the door of a studio trying to get a session when someone said no to you and then finally getting that session and for that song to be amazing is just it's very empowering it's but you only get there if you allow yourself to suck allow yourself to be terrible because it's only in allowing yourself to maybe suck and not feeling insecure that you can come out with something that's half decent very nice can I ask one last question uh, you said that 
Yeah, there's in, in the modern pop is a lot of maybe soulless statements being made. If you maybe have to say one thing in, or, or one lyric in the song on this record that that is a valuable statement for you, if you if you have any, which one would that be for you? Um, it's from a song called Heroes, uh, and when you hear the song at first, you think it's about soldiers that die in war. Uh, but in actual fact, the song is about soldiers that don't die, that come back, that look normal, and uh, yet inside, because of all the things that they've seen, they're destroyed. And because I spent quite a lot of time in America, I saw a lot of veterans as homeless people on the street in LA and in Miami. And it, it, it's really sad that you, you go and you, you almost die and you see all this horrible stuff and then you come back and everyone thinks you're fine. They're like, come on, get on with your life. What, what's wrong with you? And there's a verse in Heroes that goes, um, and you know that heroes are not meant to survive because they're so much harder to love when they're alive. Mm -hmm. You're broke with the devil in your head. You would think you were better off dead. And I wish there was a way to give you a hand to hold for you don't have to die in your glory to never grow old. Um, and it's cool that I can make pop albums and, um, and I think there's always room for, for saying something kind of meaningful within a pop record. Why not? Don't have to do it all the time. No, that's of that's, that's true. sometimes. Yeah, one one extra last question. Your sister was, of course, had an accident. She recovered before you started making the album. But no. no, she 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 was in hospital for a year and a half. Mm -hmm. She's now out of hospital. What role did your music play, maybe, during her recovery, or was that um, the I became a figure of hate for her, in her dark, very you know, you know, when you're in that much pain, she had her entire body reconstructed because she fell from the fourth story and. Um, she was on so much like morphine and and uh, crazy painkillers and oxycodone and stuff like that. Like you know uh, that she she looked at me running away from her, making this album, living another life outside of the hospital walls that she was in, and I became this they this thing that she just got so angry with. But at the same time, I think because I didn't stay there, it gave her this feeling like she couldn't just stay there forever. Because we worked together, we've worked together for years. Mm -hmm. She had to get out of that fucking room. She had to get out of the hospital. And you had Otherwise, to she would be left behind. Mm -hmm. So in a weird way, I was a figure of hate, but at the same time, I knew that by being this point to get back at, by being this person she had to get back at, she, um, it would propel her forward a little bit. She's learning how to walk again now, and it's amazing. She will have a normal life, and she's kind of a, a bit of a miracle. But still a tough bitch. So still maybe on your next record, she'll be there. Yeah. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.